We always say this, I know, but like these are actually the best brownies you're ever going to have. They're gooey, they're chocolatey, they're fudgy. Ugh, they live up to every expectation you think a brownie should be. We took all the tips and the tricks from the internet, from our old grandma's recipes, from places we'd worked to find the best recipe that we could. Throw out every other recipe that you have for brownies. This is the one you will use going forward for the rest of your life. I'm not trying to like toot our own horn, but like beep beep, you know? All right guys, as always, prep your tin. You know what to do, butter and parchment. So the first cooking job that I ever had was working for a pastry chef and he made these incredible brownies and when you start working in kitchens they always say like write down the recipes because you're going to forget them later and of course I did not do that but there are a few things that I remember from his recipe that I really wanted to incorporate into our brownie recipe. Obviously, good brownies need good chocolate. And the chocolate bar you want to use is dealer's choice. You can go for something really mellow, like a milk chocolate bar, or go into something really, really dark, like an 80% dark chocolate would work really well in here. We're going to double up on the chocolate, so we're going to use cocoa powder as well. Because we wanted a really rich, dark flavor and color, we went with the Dutch processed. You can use regular cocoa powder here, but we're always looking for that intense flavor, that intense color. The one on the left used regular cocoa powder. It's kind of drier on top and almost like too dense and fudgy on the bottom. We're adding a little bit of cocoa powder here. We're gonna add even more later. Espresso powder just does a really great job of enhancing any chocolate flavor in a recipe. If you're worried about the caffeine, you can get a decaf powder as well. It's not gonna taste like coffee or espresso. It's really just another flavor enhancer. When we add the hot melted butter to the chocolate, cocoa powder, and espresso powder, it's going to help melt everything down and dissolve, which is going to help keep our brownies really fudgy later on. Sugars, we have granulated sugar, and then when deciding between light brown and dark brown, the real difference here is that dark brown has more molasses, ergo more flavor. I don't even know what ergo means. Again, just wanted to knock your socks off with the flavor here, and dark brown was the right one for the job. And we're also gonna add a bit of salt as it brings out the flavor in any baked good. So we're gonna have six eggs. Always crack your eggs into a separate bowl in case you get any shell. Best way to remedy that is to use the eggshell. It breaks the surface tension and is the easiest way to get eggshell out of your eggs. You can start by adding one egg to the sugar just so you don't make a huge mess. Once you get it going though, you can add the rest of them. No big deal, you don't have to be like super careful like you would for a cake for instance. So working for that pastry chef, one thing that he did with his brownies was he would beat the living crap out of the eggs and sugar and really, really incorporate tons of air. So much so that it would look like a super thick pancake batter almost. This is what happens when you don't beat the sugar and the eggs. It kind of just falls really flat, right? The great thing about beating the eggs and the sugar is you create like a really solid foundation and you don't have to use a chemical leavener. And then you're gonna pour in that beautiful ganache that we made. Oh my God. Actually, when we were shooting this, there is a crowd of people around us because we couldn't get over how insanely delicious this looked. Oh God, I just, I can't believe we baked these. <laughs> Honestly, like I could have just eaten the batter myself. I'm really upset that America can't get on the metric system, but like fine. So <laughs> if we're gonna use cups, always scoop and level to make sure that we had the right amount of flour. If you just take the cup straight into the flour, it's gonna be denser than you need it to be. And you're going to sift the flour and the cocoa powder into the mixture to make sure we have no lumps and just make sure that we're really quickly incorporating it into the rest of the batter. And fold. Because we beat all that air in with the eggs, we don't want to totally deflate that. So just get the dry ingredients incorporated as quickly as you can. Pour the completed batter into your prepped tin. Smooth it out to make sure everything's pretty level. And into the oven it goes. So these are gonna rise quite a bit. After about 20 minutes, we're gonna take them out. This is like my favorite tip of the whole recipe. Take the brownies out and slam them on your kitchen counter. It's gonna crack the top as well as evens out everything and you get a much more like consistent texture. These are the same recipe. The one on the left is not whacked, right whacked. At this point, we're also going to add a bit of sea salt, optional but highly recommended. It adds a little salty bite, sweet and salty, always good. 
With a lot of baked goods, you'll stick a toothpick in and no batter remains and you're good. It's kind of not the case with these brownies. You will have a good amount of kind of fudginess that comes out on the toothpick. Trust us, they've been in there for like 45 minutes. They're definitely cooked through. They're just fudgy. When they do cool down, they also will deflate quite a bit. It results in a really even texture all throughout. Again, I can't say fudgy enough. Like, I don't even like fudge. Little known thing about me, but these brownies are like insane. I need to cut things nice. They need to be like a good, perfect square. It's so satisfying to see like a perfectly cut batch of brownies, obviously. Oh my gosh. A little tip too, it's to clean your knife after each cut. So you'll see a little bit of that fudginess comes off. They're fudgy, but they're not dense. And that is it. I mean, look at that texture. Look at it. This is like your go-to brownie batter. It's amazing as is, but you can also mix in anything that you want. More chocolate chunks, potato chips, pretzels. This is like a phenomenal like standard brownie recipe, but feel free to go crazy and mix in whatever you want. Making brownies from scratch, you know, there's other options out there that are easier, but it's like one of those fundamental baked goods that doesn't take a ton of technique, but they also kind of like go with everything and every event. You know what I mean? Like you have a breakup, brownies. Birthday, brownies. Like, they gotta work for anything. Just one of those like feel good, crowd pleasing desserts that's just like always a win. Okay, it's fine. I'm just gonna keep talking and we're gonna leave it and it's gonna be fine. You're funny, Claire. <laughs> Stop. You're so funny. You're so funny. You're funny. Beep, beep. You sound I can't.